I got it in my head to make pancakes today, but I had an idea to make them coffee pancakes or espresso pancakes. So I brewed a decaffeinated espresso shot because I've already had my morning coffee and I don't want to not have an afternoon coffee. So we're going with the decaffeinated route. I'm not gonna add this whole shot to my pancake liquid mixture, but I think maybe like two teaspoons a tablespoon maybe like my thought process is that surely this can't make it worse half a tablespoon and another one Ooh, am i gonna unlock like something magical here let's do one more that's it that's <laughs> it smells like coffee just waiting for my butter to melt and then things are about to get crazy up in here what's better than coffee pancakes chocolate chip coffee pancakes it's fun when you find like a base recipe that you like and then oh wait i should add this 1.5 tablespoons of espresso, June 2023. During this time of year, I'm always on the hunt for beach reads. My interpretation of a beach read is definitely something that's light, that doesn't require a lot of deep, intricate thinking. It's flirty, it's funny, it's got a happily ever after ending. Like, it's just a feel good experience. One of the ones I read recently that I was pleasantly surprised by was Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I actually got an eARC for this, which is an advanced reader copy in digital form. There's also like physical forms of ARCs, which are really cool. In my book blogging days, I sometimes got the chance to get those and there's no other experience like getting a book physically in your hand that hasn't been released but this was an eARC version and I've grown to really love those as well. I enjoyed this one. I know Ali Hazelwood's first book was like a huge massive novel that came out. The second one in that like world I remember not loving as much as the first but I think this may have been my favorite. I think this is the strongest of the three. It's about this character named Elsie and this is set in the world of physics. So Elsie is a physicist and her personality is very much so when we meet her, this woman who is in her, I think she's actually 26, mid to late 20s. Am I in my late 20s? That's terrifying. No, we're still mid. I think when I hit 28 is like when you classify yourself as a late 20 year old. She's in this almost like habitual loop of people pleasing and that's like definitely her main personal obstacle is she's just found a way to really minimize her own thoughts and wants in order to like find the things that she can bring out in her personality that will please who she's interacting with. Even those closest to her, too much of that is never a good thing for sure. And the hero of the story is also a physicist and when he meets Elsie, he's like one of the first people that kind of sees through this act that she's putting on. But the unfortunate part is they are in the world of physicists, physics, physics, physics. In the world of physics, there's a little bit of drama between experimental physicists and theoretical physicists. Jack is an experimental, Elsie is a theoretical. So that alone adds a lot of drama, but there's also backstory to why Elsie doesn't like Jack. And yeah, that's that's a fun element to the story. I think Jack himself is probably one of my favorite heroes of Ali Hazelwood. And just in general, I find this author's writing style really playful. She adds a lot of quirkiness to her dialogue and to her character's thoughts. So I think I officially am giving it like a 3.8 out of five. Definitely a good beach read option. Another good beach read that I read recently is Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. Now I was going into this a little bit hesitant because I read the first book in the duo, Secretly Yours, which they're standalone novels, but they're set in the same world. You see the same characters from book one pop up in book two, but they can be read individually. But Secretly Yours was good, but it didn't impress me and wow me. But unfortunately yours felt like a step up. This is a marriage of convenience story where the two characters are getting into this fake marriage because one needs access to their trust fund, as we all do. And the other needs help with a loan for a winery that he's doing or creating for a higher purpose than himself. So the two decided to help each other out and obviously you can probably imagine where things develop from there. The faking becomes less fakey. And then I'm currently also reading 
Reckless by Elsie Silver. Again, this is a series of standalones that all have like interconnecting characters and are set in the same small town. This one's really fun because it's the fourth book, so you're really seeing all the couples from the previous three books pop up. The beach bag is filling up. I'm, I'm trying to collect all of my beach read recommendations for 2023 so that I can share them with you. But these are definitely gonna be ones I include on that list. If you got beach read recommendations for me, let me know in the comment section because I am on the hunt. I'm looking for the good stuff. About a month ago, I, I showed you all these fantasy books that are in my bedroom right now that I need to tackle. I just don't know if that's a summer feeling. That feels more like a fall winter vibe. Although, did I do that this winter? I did read a little bit of fantasy, but not like anything intense, but maybe, Maybe this fall and winter, that will be the mission. But we're not talking about fall and winter right now, because it is, it is spring, technically, still. I'm not doing this. We're not making time go any faster than it already is. I was so excited to get this package. I have to show you what Casetify has sent me. They were so kind. It's been years I've been seeing people talk about Casetify, and I've been meaning to try them out, but I've just never put an order myself. However, they contacted me and were like, yo, we want to send you some things. They didn't actually say yo. Um, they said, Caitlin, we'd love to send you some goodies. So <laughs> that is what I want to show off today. Two of which have to do with my Apple Watch. The first being this Apple Watch leather brown band. Right now I'm wearing a sports band. So this is more of like a fashion everyday casual band. And I think that chocolate brown is so classy and neutral enough to work with a lot of outfits. So I am definitely going to get a lot of use out of this one. The thing that I think of this package I was the most excited for because this has been something I have like continuously told myself I need to get because I wanted a band that would fancify my Apple watch for occasions where I still want to wear my watch but I need it to be a little bit more elevated they sent this full-on link one that is special because although it's silver in the middle it has that rose gold strip that matches the I, it, technically my watch is a gold watch but I feel like it's more rose gold so that middle part matches but I still get to have a traditional silver metal watch which is something I've been really wanting this feels like the best of both worlds with this one so I want to try putting this on and sizing it ASAP and they were also kind enough to send me a case currently the case I have on is from Moft they had also sent this to me and I really love this case beautiful color nice beautiful detailing on the buttons but this screams a little bit more fall winter for me this case that case device sent me feels like the the spring summer vibe look at that it's this beautiful beige with these pink accents and I love the doodles on them if you've been following me on Instagram then you know that I've been kind of in a doodle phase with all of the work that I've been putting on there especially photos I've been doodling with my Apple pencil onto photos and making it a little bit more journal-esque and there's something about this, this hand-drawn look that feels very doodle-ish, doodle-ish, doodle-ish. I'm gonna have all of these linked down below. Just even the case itself, even though it's a soft case, feels like very structured. Let me try and pop this out. I should probably clean this. I'm gonna take a little bit of alcohol on a cotton pad to wipe the edges of all the dirt. I love the look of my phone without a case, but I just, I don't trust myself. My brother is convinced that no case is the way to go weirdo here we go moment of truth oh it looks so good with the silver i like too that it has these little bumpers for protecting it big fan love 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 so thank you keys to five for that also try linking this one from moth down below as well because this is another one that i've really loved I'm gonna give my phone a nice clean there's nothing like a clean phone eh it does hit different Why is my fridge making the loudest sound when I'm trying to film? Anyways, do you guys remember this ice cube tray I showed last week? Well, it's getting used today for a little ice latte action. Hello. I'm gonna show off my ice. You can kind of see the lemon engraving in real life. I don't know if you can tell really on camera. Someone suggested though I need to make lemon ice cubes, like actual lemon juice inside them. And I think that's a genius idea. I do like how easy it is to pop these ice cubes out because I've got some ice trays that are absolutely brutal to take ice out of. I know I told you guys about the watermelon espresso shot but i don't think i showed you i showed instagram and tiktok i'm gonna brew this i did like my first impressions on that reel and tiktok but one thing i've discovered since trying a couple more of this juicy watermelon espresso is that the flavor kind of lingers in the machine so my post coffee normal coffee non-watermelon coffee like the next one or two have a little bit of watermelon flavor i feel like i need to do some sort of like quick rinse cycle before i use a different pod because it lingers but it is brewing like any other espresso right now look at that i'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to the espresso before i add it to the milk i wish you could smell it because it smells like coffee and candy would i recommend it 
if you're adventurous, but if you like regular coffee, this is not gonna be it. I don't think I'm necessarily going to be rushing to buy another sleeve of this, but it's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be inedible. Oh wait, I need a straw. Speaking of glass straws, in other news, the other day I broke a glass straw. It's shattered on the ground. I've never had that happen before. And the breaking of a glass straw is I think one of the worst glass breaks you can have because it shatters into minute, tiny, tiny, tiny pieces like powder. And glass powder, not my idea of a good time. My espresso, let's cool that off. Some oat milk. Technically the instructions say to top it off with water, but I'm not following those rules. You take a sip and you get a dose of coffee and then it's immediately followed by watermelon Jolly Rancher flavor. Very odd. But I feel like the more I have them, the more accustomed I'm getting to it. I'm always getting to try different flavors. So kudos to Nespresso for being adventurous because if you're not taking risks, you're not winning. <laughs> okay, I wanna enjoy my coffee now. The weather outside is rainy and gloomy, so it doesn't scream barbecue weather, but I was craving a black bean burger. I'll include a link in the description box below to the recipe that I'm using. It's really well reviewed. I also like the fact that this recipe calls for baking the beans before you form them into patties to really get them crispy, because I think that's one of the, the annoying parts about a black bean burger is sometimes it can be really squishy. I'll see if that's the case here, but I'm just ready for some good flavor. Got my big bowl here for patty formation. I need half a cup of breadcrumbs for this recipe. The one negative to this recipe is it does use a food processor. They do say that you can use like a bowl and just mash it up. So I'm gonna use my potato masher. Oh, you can't, uh, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it in the view there, but I'll use that for sure to get everything scrunched together. I can't even tell you the funniest part about making this recipe is that I was determined to make it for dinner tonight, like super determined. So I had groceries delivered earlier in the day and you know what I didn't have? Black beans. There was no black beans in my apartment for a black bean burger recipe. I had to go venture and get that. How do you forget the main ingredient? What an interesting mix of ingredients right now. This is my food processor today. And we're just going for it. Slowly add black beans in. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna add it all. I will say one thing I don't like about recipes like this is it just leaves absolute chaos in my kitchen. Now it says to leave some of the black beans a little full, so I don't wanna overly mash this. I think I'm gonna leave it at that point, which looks arguably not appetizing. Okay, here we go. I can tell this is just, I gotta accept the fact this is gonna be really messy. Ball and then patty. It is binding really well, so that's good. Another one. Wait, I'm liking this. I feel like I should have added corn to this. It didn't say to do corn, but I feel like that would have been nice in here. The feta is a surprising addition though. I'm very curious about that. It smells so good and well seasoned. Can we tell the thrill is alive within me, guys? Ignore the mess I made, but I think these look so good. They're ready to go in the oven for about 10 minutes per side, and then it's time to eat. I'm gonna start prepping my burger buns for the burger. One of my favorite black bean burgers in the city is from Seven West, and something unique that they do that I don't come across very often is they put hummus as a condiment in their black bean burgers with really, really thin cucumber. So I sliced my cucumber super thin. I've got some hummus. I chose a roasted red pepper hummus. They usually just do a plain one, but I feel like this would be really delicious. So I'm just gonna do a dab here and a dab there. Oh my gosh, it looks delicious. Patties are also done, so I'm gonna plate that. This guy. My memory card ran out of space, so I'm not sure where I left off here. But I'm adding cherry tomatoes because I don't have any regular tomatoes. I want some mayo. We'll do just a little bit of ketchup. Some classic Frenchies mustard. And we'll just spread it around, but I think I'm good to go. Wow, look at that. I feel like this angle of the burger really shows how delicious it potentially looks. I haven't taste tested it yet, but hey. Okay, it's time for the taste test. Let's see, give one bite on camera. 
that is delicious wow those spices woohoo see how when you bite in you can still see some whole black beans i love that i'm off to go eat i wasn't gonna get into this abercrombie order on camera because i had already shown recently in a vlog a little mini abercrombie haul but i feel like we need to redeem ourselves after that last visit because i did end up returning both items and i think one of these items for sure is going to be a winner because i'm simply getting it in a new color it's this dress right here but um cha oh wow you really not you're not really getting anything from that it is a black maxi skirt but it has these button detailings detailings detail and a slit in the middle i know you can't really tell but it's not like a side slit it's a middle slit i got this last year in this floral green pattern and i wore it to portugal it's still one of my favorite dresses i have in my closet so i decided to get another color because that pattern is so distinct and i feel like getting it in black it's not an obvious same dress it's not like i have it in two solid colors one is very patterned and one isn't and i just really love the shape it gives me so let me try putting this on one moment i'm moving to a vertical camera for this because it's impossible to show this on a horizontal camera as you can see it has this nice little cinching at the waist there's that button detailing and then when you walk you just get this nice peak of leg i just really love it i also adore the fact that it has a lining up until past the butt so it just feels like it has some weight to it i think this v-neck is really flattering adjustable straps all good back to horizontal camera we've got one keep let's go for two i've heard a lot of talk about the traveler dress i feel like a lot of different brands have their version of this dress i'm not huge on athleisure i love it for home but for going out into the world that's not like my personal style or the thing that makes me feel the best but this dress i've heard repeatedly people say is super comfortable and this one caught my eye because it's got this white stitching here that i think will give me a little bit more of a waist than just a solid color okay so i'm unsure where i'm landing on this one i don't know if i'm just thrown off because this is not like anything i would typically wear like i said this is very athleisure like let's try it with belt bag oh okay and with maybe some glasses and runners i don't have runners on i think this is gonna be a marinate kind of decision I don't know why I was acting so confused while trying this dress on. Looking back at the footage, I actually think it's really adorable for running errands around the city. The built-in shorts make it really handy. And this is definitely going to be a keep. Then I also ordered something from Aritzia that is a bit of a gamble too. First thing I got, though, I'm not going to try on, but it's just like this basic gray tank. I have this in a light gray and a black, and these are just so good for lounging around. It's usually $25. I got it for $20 because of the clientele sale. Very nice. And then I also picked up my first dress number from them but this one's a little bit unique in that it has some lace detailing on the bottom seemed like something that could be good so let me try this on i am so relieved that i love this i think like the lace detailing here let me just pretend it have heels on but it makes the dress because otherwise i just i think there would be a little less shape to it like look at that that's so cute this is i think the sonic dress so easy to dress up dress down i could add a jean jacket to it and sneakers or i could do chunky jewelry glam it up i love that it's a v-neck i always feel like that neckline is really flattering on me so cute i love this i bet you i could even do a t-shirt over this and like bunch it up and then all of a sudden i'm wearing a skirt and i totally forgot to finish off the vlog so you're getting a podcast style ending from me i've been having some poor luck in the clothing shopping department lately so i was really just glad that these pieces worked out i also realized while editing that i really did just buy three black dresses but believe it or not i do have lots of colorful dresses in my closet for summer and and all three of these dresses i think too are very different types of occasion type of dresses i wouldn't be wearing the traveler's dress to the same place i wear the slip dress so i'm happy because you know what i'm tired of feeling ashamed for my love for black clothing i love it, it i think it really wears well on me and there's that <laughs> anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this one i'm getting ready to head to a wedding this weekend i'm about to pack so wish me luck that i don't forget anything i'll see you soon with a new one bye guys